Today, I'm going to try a new approach to paint painting by putting a grid underneath. So let's do it together and let's get started. So this is the work of Christian Hook, who was the portrait artist of the year for the Sky Art series that you can watch on YouTube. And a lot of painters do this, where they grid, you know, they uh, straight up and down the vertical, vertical and horizontal grid, and then they'll transfer their drawing using this method. Um, like I said, a lot of people do this. This is just a good example of it. And what he does is he sort of fractures it. And um, I wanted to see if I could do that in watercolor because there's something about it that's really appealing to me. I also don't think I can do it in watercolor, but um, I'm going to try for a period of time and see what happens. I've also watched some process painters and seen what they do. And sometimes because uh, oil paint is still soft, they can drag a palette knife right over it and create that kind of movement that you see here. That's not going to be an option for me in watercolor. So. I know that I'm hampered, but uh, that's never stopped me before. I really like to look at different painters, see what it is they do, and then try to see if I can apply it to my work at all. So that's what I'm going to do, and you're going to come along with me. So here we go. So first you create a grid under the drawing. So a lot of people do that. And then what I did was I put some colored squares and let them dry. And the reason for that was I wanted to have an underlying pattern and that I could rely on. Now, the way that I chose that underlying pattern was to look at where I thought my lightest lights were and where I thought my darkest darks were, and remembering to leave the whites of the paper white. So where you see that sort of purpley color is going to be quite dark. And I just wanted to see, would this work? Now, typical for me, I'm using as few strokes as possible. I usually make color dabs along the way to check the value, but this time I didn't. I was really in the moment. This is a picture of a springtime table and my uh, dog, Fig Newton, who is no longer with us, although I have a dog that looks identical, who I call not Fig Newton, but her name is Callie. And what I wanted to do was have her far in the background, but really the main player in this painting. Although, in the end, this painting really isn't about a thing. It's really about horizontals and verticals and balancing those. So it's about pattern, value, and balance. And so it really kind of goes into that area of abstract painting, which interests me, but it's not, that's not something I'm ever going to do. So like I said, I'm using as few strokes as possible. The paper that I'm using is probably a something like maybe a 5x7. It might be a 9 by 12 I can't remember. It's Arsh paper, the cold press, what I like to call the green pad. Now, in the background, I'm going to try to keep things more neutralized. So keep the color in front and neutralize in back. And by neutralize, I'm talking about grays and browns and kind of earth tones. So I'm definitely in the side of my brain, which is intuitive at this point, because I'm not looking at the thing. I'm just thinking about color and balance. And also movement is starting to be part of what I'm thinking about too. Keeping in mind the work that I showed before we started this video, I wanted to see could I make some of those marks on the paper that would drag across and create some energy and also unite forms. Drying with a hair dryer. And now typically what I do is if something isn't dark enough, I'm going to darken it. So that's what's happening with our dog form. So nor normally, this is this is pretty, well, I wanted to say that normally this is about where I would finish, but that's not true. This is, I would definitely go back in and, and add some darks like I'm doing here. But you can see that the whole thing is not unified. It's quite spotty. And usually I solve that by choosing my composition to very, at the very beginning, especially the photograph that I'm work for, working from. But in this case, I wanted to unify with color and shape, not necessarily what the photograph gave me to work with. So I thought, well, that's going to be a challenge. And I thought, yeah, so let's try it. So now what I'm going to be doing is I picked up some cerulean blue, and I'm placing that in various places. Things are looking a little less spotty, although spotty, I have to admit. And at about here, I thought, oh, this isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it does. When you see the end product, I think it really does. Uh, but I'm going to be applying it to some bigger paintings and see if I can pull it off. 
it definitely takes a little guts for the glory, but I think it's an exciting place where I want to work further. And you can at least see where the influence came from, from the first pictures that I showed you. And there's the final piece. There's something about it that's really appealing to me that I think I'll continue to work on. And so, um, so this, like I said, this is kind of a smaller piece. This is probably a nine by 12. And I thought, okay, that came out pretty good. What will happen if I try to scale it up? And so the next thing I did was scale it up. And we're going to look at that in just one second. Now, when we look at this in one second, you'll see both where I would have normally finished, which is going to be in a small window, and then where I actually finish, which is going to be, or I might have put them side by side. Let's see what happens. I'm um, narrating this days after I edited it. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I think I put them side by side. Let's see. Yeah, there they are side by side. So the one on the left is what I would have done without a grid underneath to unify, but it just felt spotty. And the one on the right is where I unified by dragging some color and form that wasn't there, but that I felt would unify the painting. And there's the final piece. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.